It started with an experience I had in 1995. I went to observe a total eclipse of the sun in India. It was my first and still only total eclipse of the sun. It was a spectacular event. It's just an experience for all the emotions. Either astronomers who can understand the whole phenomenon can predict it to within a second of time anywhere on the Earth, or a local native are equally in awe and reacting in the same way to this incredible phenomenon. It really left a big impression on me. For 51 unforgettable seconds, Guillermo Gonzalez and thousands of others looked on in wonder at this rare astronomical event. Gonzalez would later reflect upon both the mysterious beauty he had witnessed in the North Indian skies and the factors that had made it possible. Fabulous. Fabulous. The requirements for producing a total eclipse of the sun are a luminous body, in our case the sun, an eclipsing body, in our case the moon, and then an observer platform, in our case the surface of the Earth. And they all have to be in a straight line in space. The apparent size of the moon in the sky has to be almost exactly the same as the apparent size of the sun in the sky. They're both about half a degree. The sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, but it's 400 times further away. So there's this coincidence people have noted for centuries, but they just said, oh, well, it's a coincidence, and shrug their shoulders. The best place in the entire solar system to view solar eclipses is from the surface of the Earth. I've actually calculated the circumstances for eclipses from all the other planets and all the other moons, about 65 of them, the, the major moons. And it's an amazing coincidence. The one place that has observers is the one place that has the best eclipses. As Gonzalez examined this rare alignment of sun, moon, and earth, he recognized the importance of these celestial bodies to the existence of complex life on our planet. The gravitational pull exerted by our moon, for example, is strong enough to regulate the Earth's climate by stabilizing its tilt and helping to circulate the warm and cold waters of its oceans. While our planet's distance from the sun permits both liquid water and an oxygen-rich atmosphere. You have to have the right distance of the observer's home planet from its host star. And you have to have a large moon. And so there's this very strong overlap between the requirements for producing eclipses and the requirements for habitability, for having a planet that can support life. What if those things that make a planet habitable also make that planet the best place for making scientific discoveries? The nature of our planet, the nature of its atmosphere, the location in the solar system, the type of solar system it's in, even the type of star that we're around and the location within the galaxy are optimal for making a wide range of scientific discoveries. It turns out that those are also all the most important conditions for a habitable planet, that is for a planet that's conducive to beings like us and without which we could not survive. I think that's just the sort of pattern that ought to suggest to people conspiracy rather than mere coincidence. Within the gossamer light of a solar eclipse, Gonzalez and Richards recognized a fascinating connection between the factors necessary for complex life and scientific observation. We've often been told, especially in the 20th century, that the universe does not have us in mind. That is, that we exist in a very large universe and that the universe was not designed for beings like us. We are simply life that happened to come about on a tiny little planet surrounding a tiny insignificant star in a run-of-the-mill galaxy within a very large universe that was not intended. Our argument suggests something completely different. It suggests that the universe was intended, that the universe exists for a purpose, and that purpose isn't simply for beings like ourselves to exist, but for us to extend ourselves beyond our small and parochial home, to view the universe at large, to discover the universe, and in fact, perhaps, to consider whether that universe points beyond itself. There's something about the universe that can't be simply explained just by the impersonal forces of nature and atoms colliding with atoms. And so you have to reach for something beyond the universe to try to account for it. Why would the universe be such that those places that are most habitable 
also offer the best opportunity for scientific discovery.